Today's topic is CRO selection criteria, evaluation and establishing the relationship. My name is Nikki Christensen. I've been in the industry now for well over 18 years. I've worked as a study coordinator, and I actually worked at a university. We did a number of investigator-initiated trials, but sometimes also had sponsors involved in those. So in some instances, we've actually worked as a CRO on behalf of the sponsor. There were certainly a number of challenges in that in terms of meeting expectations and differing standard operating procedures. And in that case, especially the difference between what was expected by a pharmaceutical company versus how we ran things at the university. And just the way that we did our internal monitoring versus industry standard type monitoring. And there was certainly challenges in communication and in how we bridged those gaps. So I'd like to bring some of that into the class as we go. I've also worked as a CRA for a number of years for a number of sponsors and CROs, both as an employee and also as a consultant. Most recently, probably in the last six or seven years, I've worked quite a bit as an auditor doing global international trials, again, on behalf of both sponsors and CROs, and also as a project manager. I've been a director and a trainer for a number of years. So I'll try to bring some very real-world experiences or at least some examples that hopefully will be relevant and applicable and helpful in clarifying some of the topics or some of the, some of the focus of what we want today. So our learning objectives, to review key questions and selection criteria during CRO evaluation, and RFP stands for Request for Proposal Review Process. Explain the importance and various tools necessary for establishing clear expectations communication and objectives for the collaboration, and address techniques and oversight requirements to allow for high performance alliance. Definition, just to make sure we're all very clear on what we mean when we say CRO. It's not a clinical research organization. That's probably the most common misunderstanding. It is a contract research organization. And for ICH GCP, it's defined as a person or an organization, commercial, academic, or other, contracted by the sponsor to perform one or more of a sponsor's trial-related duties and functions. So a CRO can be myself as an individual when I do consult or when I audit. I'm being hired for a specific service by a sponsor. And certainly with a startup organization or a very small startup company, you may have a fairly small team and you may be outsourcing a number of different types of tasks, such as data management, laboratory collection, you may even outsource to an independent medical monitor to assist with oversight of the trial, with protocol writing, perhaps even outsource statistician. All of those individuals in their role are considered a contract research organization by this definition. And some of the keys with this is that a sponsor may transfer any or all the sponsor's trial-related duties and functions to a CRO. But the key here is that regardless of what is delegated, the sponsor still has ultimate responsibility. And that's very logical because we think about what is a sponsor. A sponsor is the one that is going to provide the funding for a trial or the support or a product. And they're also the ones who are ultimately going to be responsible for the results in the data. So they need to be responsible for how that data and information is collected. Generally, the sponsor is going to be one, the one that's going to submit the IND application or the device application. And the data that they provide, the sponsor is saying that it is valid, that they've ensured the integrity of the data, they've ensured the methods of collection and oversight and review. So ultimately, the sponsor will be responsible. The, the, the key here is the CRO should also implement quality assurance and quality control, but the sponsor should be checking on that. So when we select a partner, we need to select a partner that has these systems in place to ensure that we have quality data or quality information or quality product. Also, price HGCP, any trial-related duty and function is transferred to and assumed by a CRO should be specified in writing. And the second part of that is that if it's not, if it's not specifically transferred, and I will say in writing, then the sponsor is still responsible for that specific activity. To give an example of that, one trial that I worked on with a fairly small startup company and a CRO was that we had transferred everything to the CRO in writing, including monitoring, data management, site selection. The one task that the sponsor did retain 
was to hire a medical monitor directly. And the medical monitor was a contractor as well, was not specifically an employee of the, the sponsor company, but all of their activities were managed by the sponsor and the payments were managed by the sponsor and not by the CRO. And at the end of the trial, when an audit was conducted, and we looked at the trial master files, the CRO, they had all the correspondence except for correspondence related to the medical monitor and related to specific contact or information or SAE reviews that the medical monitor had specifically done. And initially, the sponsor went ahead and faulted the CRO for not obtaining this correspondence. But when we went back and the scope of responsibilities and the trial-related duties and tasks were reviewed, it was noted that the sponsor never specifically transferred this requirement to the CRO. That it was very clear the sponsor would be managing the medical monitor in serious adverse events. So the CRO, in turn, did not keep that correspondence. So it was a matter of communication and semantics. But again, since that task was not communicated in writing or transferred in writing specifically to maintain that correspondence, the CRO did not do it. 